Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Lynn. Good afternoon. Hey, Joanne. Hey, Vicki. Hey, Joel. Hi, Yumi. Hi, Denise. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Priyanka. So I want to thank you all for coming here today to hear about the Essene Gospel of Peace. This book has literally knocked my socks off. So there is a man by the name of J.M. Hammer, and he wrote a series of books called, that are part of what's called The Way of Mastery. And The Way of Mastery is composed of three books, The Way of the Heart, The Way of Transformation, and The Way of Knowing. And in the back of The Way of the Heart, the very last page was a picture of this book. And I couldn't understand why he was including that, but I had the opportunity to do a retreat with him back in December. And he said that he ended up going somewhere and was brought to this woman's house. And when she explained, when he explained to her he, who he was in his relationship with Jesus, she was, she led him to this book. And this book consists of the first four books of what are called the Gospel of Peace, which is the Essene Gospel of Peace, the unknown books of the Essenes, the lost scrolls of the Essene Brotherhood, and the teachings of the elect. So the reason this came about is there's a man named Edmund Bordeaux Zakeli. And he spoke 10 different languages, and he was given access to the private hidden teachings in the archives of the Vatican, and he translated these books. And it's Jesus talking to people about what you're supposed to eat, how you're supposed to live, how to make connection with Heavenly Father and the seven angels of Heavenly Father, how to make a connection to divine, to earthly mother and the seven angels of earthly mother. It's the story of the Lord's Prayer and how the connection to Divine Mother got taken out of the Lord's Prayer. And if you're supposed to make a connection to God through the Earthly Mother, but they take out all references to Earthly Mother, how are you supposed to do that? It's like, it's like telling you you need to go here, but hiding the map on you. And then there's these incredible, what are called the the sevenfold peace pathway and then there are what are called the hold on a second let me get to it the communions and then i came across this book which is called the essene book of days and it was written by a man he's passed away now his name is dan and barry and what he did is he went in and for every single day of the year he wrote down the earthly mother angel that you're supposed to pray to in the morning and then the heavenly father angel that you're supposed to pray to at night. So let's say that you're starting with Sorry, so, sorry Lynn. Did you want to live stream it on Facebook? Sorry. Oh, got you guys. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to I got to live stream this on Facebook. Oh my God, Priya, I wish you'd interrupted me earlier. I completely forgot. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. That's not... All right, hold on a second. No, this that was important. Um, Essene Gospel of Peace. Right. Hold on, guys, bear with me one minute. So I know I'm doing a really bad job of trying to explain what this is. But just know that there are specific rules and laws and guides that we're supposed to have in order for us to have direct connection to source, in order for us to have direct connection to God, in order but to just know that there to be able to hear spirit so, so clearly. So as I've been doing this, as I've been eating a raw vegan diet, the conversations that I've been having with spirit have been absolutely extraordinary. So in the Essene, in the Essene book of, of Jesus, they talk about the sevenfold peace of heavenly mother and of, earth, of earthly mother and heavenly father. Peace shall I bring to thy body, guided by the angel of power, which is the sun. Peace shall, I, peace shall I bring to the heart by the angel of love, which is water. Peace shall I bring to thy mind by the angel of wisdom, which is air. Like there's a correlation. Everything that there is in heaven, there is here on earth. And this book is the exact roadmap of how to get there. This is why I'm so excited about this. So we're going to do a four-month journey going through each of the books. 
So month one, we'll go through book one, which is the Essene Gospel of Peace. Month two, we'll go through book two, which is the Unknown Book of the Essenes. Month three, we'll go through the book three, which is the Lost Scrolls of the Essene Brotherhood. And book four is the Teachings of the Elect. So we'll go through that in the fourth month. And it's going to be April, May, June, and July. These are, the Essenes were the, the beings who taught Yeshua. They were a very, very select and secret society. It took you three years to be able to gain acceptance into their community after, fo after following their laws. So I was talking about this book, The Essene Gospel of Days. So the thing that's so brilliant is there's an entire flow. This man, Dan and Perry, he said he just, he got connected to the Essenes when accidentally, when he was studying at the ARE, which is the Association for Research and Enlightenment, basically Edgar, Edgar Casey's Center in Virginia Beach. And he kept hearing reference to the Essenes. So he dug and he dug and he did his work. And then one day he had this total download in 1979 and he wrote this entire book, The Essene Gospel of Peace. And it talks about the different days. So each day of the week, there's a different meditation. So for example, today is Thursday, March 31st. The seasonal focus is the buds unfolding to early flowers because we're in spring. The morning focus is the angel of water. The deepening says, hold water in your favorite bowl as you read. After, give water to your plants because you're imbuing the plant through the water with love. And then the meditation for the day is in my upward movement toward the perfect flower that I truly am, what feeds my inner being, but the waters of the earth given by the father to the mother and given back again, water of the spirit, water of the earth, fill me fully with your life and make me whole. And then every day you write down and you say today, I will bring the perfection of my spirit to and then you choose what you're gonna bring the perfection of your spirit to. And then you write down your feelings for the day. And then there's a blessing in the evening and then there's a focus of the evening. Like the focus of Monday of Thursday nights is the angel of wisdom. And the blessing in the evening is, there is a knowing in this universe that opens flowers in their time that gives strength to me to grow. The wisdom of this primal source is always mine to tap for I am one with all and all is mine to know. They really, really support us in spending time in nature, in getting to understand that nature provides everything that we are, that our human bodies are made up of the four elements. Our bodies are made up of, of fire and air and water and earth, and to really have reverence for that. But the thing that is the most important about this book is it, it's literally the instructions and the roadmap of how to live successfully as a human being being in complete connection with our own divinity. I know I'm just rambling about this, but I could talk about this for days. I swear to God, I'm just so excited about it. What questions do you guys have? Because obviously you're here because it's something that's of interest to you. But tell me what questions do you have? What do you want to know about this? And I know Vicki, Yumi, Denise, Lauren, and Orlando, you guys are off camera. You don't have to come on camera to ask. But what would you like to know? Anybody? Do you guys want to hear the prayer that, that got taken out of the Bible? That's the prayer to the earthly mother. So gorgeous. He says, there's a prayer that you do to the father, but then there's this prayer that you do to earthly mother. Jesus gave all these commandments. And I heard this when I first started my ministerial training back in 1990. Listen to this. Let the weight of your fool be not less than a mina, but mark that it does not go up beyond two. He literally talks about when you're supposed to eat what and how much you're supposed to eat. So he says, every day, pray to your heavenly father and earthly mother that your soul become as perfect as your heavenly father's Holy Spirit is perfect and that your body become as perfect as the body of the earthly mother is perfect. If you understand, feel, and do these commandments, then all for which you pray to your heavenly father and your earthly mother will be given to you. 
for the wisdom, the love, and the power of God are above all. So for in this manner, we pray to the Heavenly Father, and we all know this prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy work, thy will be done on earth as it is in, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. But here's the one that got taken out. You ready for this? After this manner, pray to the earthly mother. Our mother, which art upon earth, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in us as it is in me. As thou sendest every day thy angels, send them to us also. Forgive us our sins as we atone all our sins against thee. And lead us not into sickness, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the earth, the body, and the health. Amen. So they kind of condensed the two, and they took out all the part. The only way to get to the heavenly father is through the earthly mother. They all prayed together with Jesus to the, earthly, to the heavenly father and the earthly mother. And then Jesus spoke to them and said, even as your bodies have been reborn through the earthly mother's angels, may your spirit likewise be reborn through the angels of the heavenly father. Become therefore true sons of your father and of your mother and true brothers of the sons of men. Till now we were at war with your father and with your mother and with your brothers and you have served Satan. Until today, live at peace. From today, live at peace with your heavenly father and your earthly mother and your brothers and the sons of men and fight only against Satan lest he rob you of your peace. I give the peace of your earthly mother to your body and the peace of your heavenly father to your spirit and let the peace of both reign amongst the men, the, the sons of men. So I just took everyone through the book club that was called Outwitting the Devil. And there were people that were like, oh, I don't believe in the devil. Oh, I'm triggered by the word Satan. All that's good and fine, but this is what the devil said in Outwitting the Devil. He said, I am 50% of every particle of energy. I am 50% of every atom. There's 50% that's positive and there's 50% that's negative. And the devil represents the negative. We always have a choice between light and dark. We always have a choice between the truth and, the, and, the, and, a, and a lie. We always have a choice between positive and negative. And what the devil said in the book was, and it was just brilliant because he literally was saying the same things that Jesus is saying in the Thespian Gospel of Peace. He's saying, look, at every choice you have a moment, he said, the devil was saying, one of the ways in which I make people come to my side is if they want money, I give them a lot of money. And then when they have that money, I give them, I have them eat a lot of food and then they go unconscious. He said, I control 98% of humanity. So if you want to have a chance to be able to win, to be able to make that connection to heavenly father, you know how the priests came in through religion and they said, the only way to get to the, to the father is you have to, you know, let the priest talk. No. No one's supposed to talk to God except you. Like you're supposed to be speaking directly, but you have to learn how to honor the angel of air, the angel of water, and the angel of fire every day. So that means bathing day daily, that means breathing daily, and that means getting sunlight on your body. Again, all this gets explained in this brilliant little book. But it's you know, it's very, very triggering. And people were like, oh, it, it didn't feel very loving to me. There's parts that are going to feel not loving. There are parts that are going to feel really harsh. And that's why we're going to do this, you know, as a group, as a community, so we can talk about those things. Some of the instructions in here, people are like, oh my God, I don't know that I could do that. Like Jesus says, eat one thing at a time. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he said, instead of having guacamole, just have the avocado. I now sit in silence on Shabbat from Friday to Saturday, and I fast. He talks a lot about fasting in here. He said the body is filled with so, with so much from what it is that we eat and how it is that we've eaten and when it is that we've eaten. You know, they recommend intermittent fasting. Sometimes they'll say eat just one, one time a day, or they'll say fast for three days or fast for a week. So this is not a pathway that's for everybody. I don't recommend that everybody join this. I don't think it's for everybody. I think you'll know when it's for you. I've had so many of my students who've thrown this book across the room and said, I don't want anything to do with it. So if it's something that you think you want to do, you know, like really go in and ask your inner guidance if this is something that you should do, because it's really, really potent. I can tell you that I've had extraordinary changes in my life since I've been doing this. The communication with spirit has been 
out of this world. Incredible. You're basically taking away all the things that, you know, has, have been man-made to put in the way of our relationship with the divine. So the book is called The Essene Gospel of Peace. The author is Edmund Bordeaux Zakeli. You can buy this book. I think it's like $24, $26. Yay. I love that you have it, Vicki. You can, you can find it on um, Amazon. The other book that I recommend is the incredible companion to this is the Essene Book of Days for 2022, because what it does is it goes through every single day and it tells you what is the, you know, angel of heavenly mother? What is the angel of heavenly father? What are the focuses? Here's a meditation. He said he wrote this book and he always wondered, should I go back and change it? And every single time he was told not to change a thing. And then I have this wonderful little diagram that explains the days here, I have enough on the show too. Um. Lynn, while you're looking for that, can I ask you something? Yeah, ask. What's the advantage of doing this as a book club versus doing it on your own? <laughs> because on your own, you may get really, really triggered and you may just put the book down and by doing it as a book club, you're going to have a whole community of people that are going to go, yeah, I got truly triggered or upset by that thing myself, or here's a different way that I saw it. It gives you another point of view. It gives you a community of people. You know how somebody said it takes a village. It, I, I, you know, the Essenes were a community. They were a village. And I believe, I truly believe in my soul that anybody that's called to do this is someone that was part of the Essene community thousands of years ago. And I think that that's something that we're trying to bring back together. That's what I believe with my entire heart and soul. And it was put upon my heart to start a book club for this. I mean, the book clubs that we're doing, you know, were just a couple of weeks. We went through um, the Sophia Code. We went through the Magdalene Manuscript. We went through Outwitting the Devil. And then Jesus showed me how he had set me up with all of those things to now lead this one. And it's going to be a four month journey and it's going to be intense and it's going to be uncomfortable. And it's going to make you question everything about your life. Here's what I promise you. This is not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of hard work. I don't think that everybody should do it. I, you know, I know I'm like sitting here. I should be like trying to talk you into this thing. I don't think it's for everybody. I really don't. But I think, you know, there's, there's six people that have signed up so far. And I've talked with a lot of people about this. And, you know, but if, if there's some part of you that knows, like, you just know, like if Jesus has called you and said, you know, come do this thing, you know, I, I think, I think that, that the answer may be yes. You know, he gave me the price point. He said, make it $444 for four months. And, you know, I've broken it up into two payments, you know, one payment, two payments or four payments to make it easier for people. And, you know, this is something that you're investing into you're investing into your relationship with God, you're investing into your future. But again, you know, I this is this is this is one of the times. I mean, I'm always like, oh yeah, come do my class, come do this, come do that. This is going to be great. I'm going to tell you, this is going to be hard. This is going to be hard work, you know, because it's going to challenge us with everything that we grew up with, everything that our religions taught us, everything that our parents taught us, everything that you know, unless you've had an incredibly clean and clear and healthy spiritual, you know, relationship your entire life, it's going to just challenge you. So I think that for me, a book club, and the reason why Jesus put it on my heart to do this is that he said, you guys are going to need each other to get through this. You know, I've, I've read the first two books and I was like, oh my God, everybody has to read this book. And then I've, you know, I have people who have been like, I don't want anything to do with literally one of my girls. She's like, I threw this book across the room. I'm not doing that thing. Is this thing literal? And I said, as far as I can tell, and she goes, well, I'm not taking it literally. And she's just, she's been mad. She's been full of mad about this book. There is incredible revelations that I've had reading this book going, oh my God. I remember hearing my, my, my ministerial teacher say to me, the, 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 red, the reverend, he, he said, you know, it used to be our father who art in heaven, our mother who art the earth, and then all references to divine femininity were taken out of the Bible. And I remember at the time thinking, is that really true? And here it is in black and white, you know? So there's some stuff in here that you're going to go, God, that makes so much sense. 
And there's, then there's some stuff in here that you're going to go, there's no way. And then other things you're going to be like, oh my God, of course. I mean, it's really, really beautiful stuff, but you'll have a really incredible, intense relationship with all the angels. I mean, they talk about the trees and how holy the trees are. Think of what trees provide. Trees provide oxygen. We can go without food. We can go without water. We can fast for a week. We can't go without air. Who provides us with air? The trees. Photosynthesis. They also happen to provide us with furniture and homes, and they provide us with paper for money. You know, I mean, trees are these incredible beings. And there's that, I don't know if I'm saying this right, that mycenial network where they all communicate to each other through their roots. Anyway, there's a picture that I want to show you that I'm sending to anybody who's joining the class. And it's this really, really gorgeous picture. Hold on, I have it in my favorites. Of, um, it's the tree of life from the book with, that someone wrote like all the angels of the days and what, so like on Friday evening, the heavenly father and I are one. On Saturday morning, the earthly mother and I are one. She gives the food of life to my body and it's all about nutrition. And then you go up to Sunday morning. Oh, Saturday evening, sorry, the angel of eternal life. Descend upon me and give me eternal life to my spirit and you honor gravity. And then you go to Sunday morning, the angel of earth, enter. I mean, all of these are, it's, it's a code that's speaking to us. So we're gonna start this journey on April 7th. It's gonna be a book club and we're gonna meet from one till two for an hour every week and talk about the portion. We're going to, you know, divide up each of the books into four weeks. So there'll be certain pages to cover. You know, it's, he, he literally says, for the month of Ijar, eat only barley. For the month of Sivan, eat only wheat, the most perfect among all seed-bearing herbs. Let your daily bread be made from wheat, and let the Lord take care of your body. From Tammuz, eat the sour grape, that your body may diminish. And Satan may depart from it. And in the month of Elul, give the grape that the juice may serve as you drink. And he's saying that you can have the milk of, of, of creatures, but not the milk where the cow is in a machine and there's blood and pus in the milk. You want to get raw foods. He definitely talks about having a raw vegan diet and just being able to eat the food that comes from earth. You know, and people are going to make whatever choices they make. I got this this flower that was out of Italy that has never touched American soil and been changed the way that it has. And I and my family have celiac disease and it didn't affect us. It was fascinating. Therefore eat not anything which fire or frost or water has destroyed for burned, frozen or rotted foods will also burn, freeze and rot your body. Be not like the foolish husband, husbandman who sowed in his ground cooked and frozen in rotten seed. And when the autumn came, his fields bore nothing and great was his distress would be like the husbandman who sowed in his field living seed and whose field bore living ears of wheat paying a hundredfold for the seed which he planted. So Jesus does this thing with me where if he wants me to have a message, he calls out chapter and verse. And you know, if he's like, you need to go take a shower or you need to wash your food before you eat it or you need to start planting your own garden. He literally will be like Matthew 9, 17, you know, Luke 4, 7. And I go in these, look these things up and they're literally the Bible verses about what I was just reading in the Essene Gospel of Peace. So I'm gonna share those with you guys as we go through this. So I've been channeling Jesus since 2020. He first came into my life in 1984 when I became a born again Christian. I started speaking in tongues. He started speaking to me all the time. It scared the crap out of me. I was 22 years old and I stopped listening to him. Then he would talk to me intermittently from time to time and give me messages. He told me in 1996 not to marry my husband, but my husband was really wealthy and I didn't listen to him when we broke up and it was the worst four years of my life. And then I got a divorce and then we got back together. And then he woke me up in the middle of the night in 2020 in October and told me to put the copy of the Way of Mastery up off the bookshelf. And uh, I, I channel him a lot. Um, he came to me with Mary Magdalene, who I remember being his wife. 
and the mother of his children. And, you know, again, you guys are going to hear a lot of stuff that you may not agree with, but you know, it's my truth. So you can have your own. I remember being his youngest sister when he walked the earth and he asked me to take people on a journey of reading the books that were reading in the way of mastery, which is where I found this book. And so anyway, I think that's all, all I have to say about this. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask? Yumi, does that answer your question about why a book club? Yes, it does. Thank you. I mean, you know, any one of you can go off and do this on your own, but we're going to be doing this together. And the most exciting thing is I'm going to channel Jesus each week and he's going to do questions and answers. So you guys are going to get to hear, you know, my version of him. Um, Valerie, are you texting? Oh, I'm glad we can. Yes, of course, baby. Of course. Um, Priyanka, can you drop the link? I think she dropped the link. Um, yes, I'm doing that right now. Okay. So the link is there if you guys are interested. Can I answer any questions for anybody? You guys can ask me anything. I'm a New Yorker. I curse. Like, if there is anything you can say to me, like, don't worry about it. Lauren uh, just wrote in the chat that she started uh, her plants indoor for gardening this year. Does the book talk anything about that? Um, doesn't talk about planting indoor. It talks about planting. It talks about planting so that your plants can receive sunlight. So Lauren, is that something that you have? Like do your plants have access to the sunlight? Hi, it's me. <laughs> can you hear me? Of course. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, my bedroom windows, I have an east and a south window and that's where I've started them at in my bedroom so they're here when I meditate Love and them. um and yeah they're absolutely have access to sunlight excellent excellent yeah I I do organic celery every morning and there were a couple times when I went to the market and there was an organic celery and Anthony Williams said if you can't get organic food pray to the angel of purity to have your food be cleansed of whatever might have been sprayed on it but the difference in the taste for me was unbelievable. Like, like organic food has a whole different color to it. It has a different taste to it. It has a different energy to it. And how it feels in my body, sorry, I'm just removing my jacket. Um, how it feels in my body is so completely different. Like I, the, the thing that's amazing is, is the intensity of the spiritual relationship when you don't have crap in the body and it's acting like interference. The messages that come forth from spirit are so clear. Like my channeling just went to a whole new level. I absolutely agree. I do organic gardening and I have only eaten organic um, vegetables throughout pretty much throughout my life. Um, because I noticed way back in like the 70s that the food started tasting, had no taste. You yes. needed orange and there was no taste to it anymore. So I completely started going organic back then. Um, oh. so yeah, I totally agree. And I actually, I did start doing celery juicing when, um, you talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anthony William, he, Anthony William is another amazing man. That's probably another book club that should be done at some point, but he, he had a visitation. And when he was four years old by the spirit of spirit of the most high, who's the same spirit that spoke to Edgar Casey and Padre Pio and helped them do their miraculous healings. And, you know, he talks about how there's 144,000 unnamed angels and these unnamed angels okay. will help you with everything that you need in your life, including purifying your celery, if you can't get organic. What I didn't ask was for the angel of taste to, ch to taste the change of the, to change the taste of the celery so that it tasted like <laughs> organic celery. Well, great. That's been quite helpful to me. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome, my love. Would love to have you on this journey, Lauren. I am seriously thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Well, you certainly know where to find me. Um, I do. And Priya, we've we've posted about this on the Money Network platform, right? Um, no, I don't think so. Can you make sure we do that so that everybody okay. over there knows as well? Sure, yes. Okay, beautiful. Um, Vicki, you think you want to come join us, my love? We can't hear you, honey, you're muted. 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to unmute. I'm on my iPad, which I normally don't use for uh, Zoom meetings. Um, I'm seriously thinking about it. I have two questions, I think. One is, are these going to be recorded and available afterwards? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All 16. And there's a couple of weeks where I'm going to be leading retreat. So it's going to be 16 sessions. We're going to take four months to do this. But there may be a week or two where we need to skip because I'm leading a retreat somewhere. And, mm -hmm. you know, if so, um, everything's going to be recorded and then it'll all be kept. So the group that we were just talking about, um, my Mighty Network platform, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to put together a um, book club group on, on Facebook so that everybody can meet and commune there and talk with each other. Um, for those of us that do get triggered from time to time, there are a couple people that are going to be in this group that I have personally trained. They've gone through a year of training with me where we have tools and techniques to help you get over kind of like the speed bumps. Because there may be something and you'll go, I'm sorry, but I don't believe in that. Like one of the girls was like, you know, I, the, the word Satan is, you know, nah, nah, nah. and I said, okay, so let's help you clean off the word Satan so it doesn't trigger you. So you can mm -hmm. have a normal reaction to it, you know, kind of thing. Um, so for whenever people get, you know, whenever things get in the way, we have tools to help you get over them and get past them. Okay, and, what was and then, yeah. um, my second question is, um, I'm really, I'm really excited about this. I, um, last late August, uh, went raw vegan, uh, overnight and, and, and I did that for like two months and then I started incorporating cooked foods back into my life, but they were, uh, vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I am right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I eat probably 40% raw, 60% vegetarian. Um, and, but I'm, I'm feeling really good. And I did some cleanses through another person that I'm following, um, the liver, the colon and, um, Beautiful. like a whole body cleanse. And those were, uh, very enlightening. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I feel like I'm on the right path with this. It feels really like it's the next phase to maybe to get more serious about maybe heading back toward the raw vegan side. Yeah. And, and, and here's, here's the thing that, that Jesus is saying right now. Um, if you're here, it's because he called you forth. It's mm -hmm. not because of my you know, charming wit and personality. Um, <laughs> it, you know, I'm of service to him like 10,000%. Mm -hmm. So if you're here, he's calling you forth. If you're here, you already have a profound relationship with him. And he's okay. just calling, like all he ever says to me before I go to sleep at night is, remember, remember, remember. And I'm always like, what is it that you want me to remember? And he's like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. But, you know, we're just being reminded of stuff that we already know. I don't feel like I'm teaching anything, anybody anything. I feel like I'm reminding people of things as I'm remembering. You know, we're all kind of waking up together makes sense it does it does and i do feel like this is another step and a giant one yeah but it, i feel it's a huge I feel one. called i do I, it to resonates. Me. I was 250 pounds most recently 233 went down to 203 by eating raw vegan but i was a i'll have a double cheeseburger with fries and a vanilla milkshake and they're like would you like anything else and i'm like oh yeah it was a really good day today can i get an apple pie to go with that like you don't get to 250 pounds by accident right Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I was always like, Ooh, I'll get an entire pizza cause it's cheaper. And then I'll just eat half of it. Oh, well, what's another slice or two? Oh my God. I ate the entire thing. So I understand what it's like to try and block yourself and to have given all that up and to now be like, I eat green goddess salad. I'm Googling raw vegan recipes. I joined TikTok to find raw vegan recipes. True story. <laughs> You know, like it, it's such a radical departure, but how I feel, how I think, how I look, you know, how I interact with, with the world, it's been amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I credit it to this silly little book mm -hmm. and that amazing being known as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anything else, my love? No, I, I, I actually think I'm going to do it. And uh, thank you. I, I think it's going to be a, a good ride. Yeah. Now, here's a really fun thing. We haven't confirmed this yet, but the man who introduced me to this, uh, J.M. Hammer, may come in from time to time and come and spend a class with us. So that'd be a real treat too. 
we'll see. He's back in Bali, so his time is completely off from us. And I think at the times we're meeting, it's like one in the morning for him. So, or he may just do a recorded thing. So we'll see. Um, Joanne, any questions? Joel, any questions I can answer for you guys? Orlando? Uh, I actually do have a question. Sure. Um, so I don't, I feel like I don't go through the process of like prayer correctly. I, I just, uh, I don't know what it is. It's just, I feel like, oh, there's a specific process to prayer. Um, so I don't really, I would like your, in, your input on that. Absolutely. So when I started my ministerial training back in 1990, I was taught something that was called effective prayer. And there are five steps and they're so simple. You ready? I want you to write these down. Okay. The first sure thing is. The first step is you acknowledge that there is a power in the universe that is the power of love, that is the power of light, and that's the power of God. So it's acknowledgement of the unifying power in the universe. The second step is that you know that as that power exists, it not only exists in the world, but it exists as you. It runs in, as, and through you. So there's the acknowledgement of it and then the unification with you. Then the third step is that you're going to affirm that something is a certain way. So what you could affirm, Joel, is to say, and as you know, I speak now, I know that I speak the word of law into the universe, and you affirm what it is that you want to have manifest. So this is like a, an assumption or an affirmative prayer. So you know, I would say something like, I know that I live in the home of my dreams with a community of like-minded souls who are in alignment with me spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And then the fourth step is that you, you say, by speaking these words into the law of the universe, I know that they are made whole and that they are made manifest. It's like the absolute confirmation of what it is that you are affirming. I give thanks and I have deep gratitude. So the last step, step five is thanks and gratitude. That you know that it is so, and it's like, it is done, it is done, it is done. If you want to find more about this, there's a woman named Viana Stabal who does something called theta healing. And it's a way of going up and connecting. She said, you either go three feet, six feet, or 67 feet up. You go to a theta realm, and then you talk to... You acknowledge that source is real. You acknowledge the mother, father, God, source complex, whatever you want to call it. You speak something as an affirmation, as a confirmation. You know, it is confirmed, you know, like, not like a demanding, but like, you just know with every ounce of your being that something is a certain way. And once you say that, you know, once you, you've made that confirmation, then you give your appreciation and gratitude for it. And then you, you confirm and you say, it is done, it is done, it is done. And watch everything that you pray for start to manifest. Yeah, I'm kind of confused as to how that's not like demanding. Um, it's not demanding, it's commanding. Or commanding, sorry. Very, very, very big difference between demanding something. Demanding is of the ego and commanding is of the soul. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was going to ask you to mention really briefly, uh, it's as if this, you mentioned how if you were here, Joshua or Jesus brought us here, right? Or, or guided us to be here. I felt kind of bad because I had started on a course in miracles like on November of last year. And I was, I was doing it for about close to two months. Then I just got off, you know, downward trajectory. I didn't, I didn't read any of the material again. And when I first found out about the Essenes, um, I just briefly want to share this. You know why you stopped? I received this <laughs> when I got baptized. Oh so I was like, God. wow, what a coincidence. Um, right? So listen, if you stopped, Jesus stopped you. That's what I'm thinking as well. I feel like the material was a little too, yeah. too much for me. So, so JM, who sat down in 1987 after doing a meditation and a golden portal appealed in his bed, in his living room. And Jesus walked through it and he said, he didn't even have to tell me who it was. I knew who it was. He's like, I wasn't religious. I was into yoga and meditation. He, at one point he kept trying to do the course of miracles and the same thing happened for me. And he said, he, you know, it said, uh, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And he said, he literally tried to turn the page and the page felt like it weighed 2000 pounds. Later on, he said to Jesus, 
how come I couldn't read that book? And Jesus said, because I stopped you. And every time I tried to get through the Course in Miracles, like I would get to lesson 50, I am sustained by the love of God and I couldn't get past it. And I tried from 1985 when I first discovered it till last year, until Mary Magdalene and I went through the entire, all the lessons together. So it just wasn't your time. Don't beat yourself up for it. It'll be your time. You'll know when you're ready. And he's telling me that you were definitely one of the Essenes. And that's why you're here. I had a feeling because when I was listening to the book, I had a lot of flashbacks. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. So, ooh, ooh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> oh, cool. So, yeah, ready. I mean, I, I, don't, I think that's about all the questions I have for now. Okay, um, I really do appreciate it. Thank yeah, you so much for your time. Yeah, you're so welcome. It's, it's my pleasure. My, my pleasure. Um, Orlando, we haven't heard from you. Are there any questions that you have, my dear? Hi, you're muted. We can't hear you. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yes, beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, Very well. On the 1st of January, I started doing the Course in Miracles with Mary Magdalene and you. Oh, lovely. Uh, last year, I did it with Tina Spaulding. Oh, Tina. Um, Tina's how I got started on this whole thing. Yes. Yes. Um, and I met JM in 2010 in the UK. Oh. At the wow. Way of the Heart Festival, wow. I did the uh, Way of Mastery, and I went to Bali in 2012 to spend a month with him, Radical oh Inquiry, God. and all oh these my things. God. I just saw him in November, I mean in December, in Scottsdale, and then I hosted him in Virginia Beach in January. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. That. So you know the power of this book. Uh, I Yes, I already ordered it. I'm in South Africa. Oh, um, wow. So, so always the timing is a bit I, difficult for I me. I know, I know. I'm uh, so sorry. After a hard day of work, and I like, oh, like right now, I'm a little bit sleepy. So, so, so yes, I'll definitely join. I'll, um, I cherish your daily videos like nothing, and I re-listen over and over to all the videos from your <laughs> channel, and and obviously with. Our beautiful Yeshua, I feel always at home. Yes. And yes. Yes. so, yes, looking forward to sharing with all of you what Good. we are, the beauty that we are. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm delighted. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I will definitely let JM know that we connected because he remembers. Our, he goes, I don't always remember him by name, but I definitely remember him by face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, Orlando. Thank yeah, you yes. so much. All right, thank my you, darling, thank you. if there isn't anything else, I love you all. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you, my brothers and my sisters in, 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 in God and in love and in Christ. It is my honor to be on this path with all of you. I have one yeah. last question, if possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, would it be wise to go through the way of mastery, go, go through the, going through that series before um, reading the Essenes again? So... Let me tell you that there are a group of 15 to 20 of us that started the Way of Mastery journey last January, January of 2021. And we are on, tomorrow will be lesson 16 or lesson four of the Way of Transformation. When I was woken on October 26, 2020, at three in the morning by Yeshua, he says, go downstairs and pull this book off the bookshelf. And I go to the bookshelf and there is the Way of Mastery, this big fat blue book. And he said, find the author. And I open it up and it says, you, I said, it says, you're the author. And he's like, not me, find the channel. And I'm like, so I start Googling. And by 520 in the morning, I find JM Hammer and his light is on on Facebook. And I'm like, can I write to this person at 520 in the morning? Why is this light on? And then it said that he lived in Bali. So I wrote to him and I said, hi, JM, my name's Lynn. I live in Los Angeles. I live in New York, used to live in Los Angeles. And uh, Jesus just woke me up and asked me if I would take a journey through the way of mastery, which is your body of work, and channel him. And I know this sounds really bizarre, but I'm writing to ask you for permission. And very humbly, JM writes back and he says, greetings, sister. It must be your turn to walk with him. He said, you don't need my permission. They're his words. And I was like, oh, my God. Because when I had been on Tina's platform, when I told her that I was going to be channeling Magdalene and going through the Course in Miracles lessons, she asked me to go start my own platform, kind of like when the mama bird kicks the baby bird out of the nest. And she said, please don't tell anybody that you're channeling Magdalene. And I was like, you told me to tell everybody. Anyway, so 
you know, I, I was like, I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping on anybody's toes or offending anybody. And so JM and I like, kept in touch and I told him what was happening with the group. And then one day I was just having like some kind of ego identity crisis. And I reached out to him and I said, I need your help because I feel like I'm going crazy. So we set up a time. He's 12 hours ahead from where I am in New York. We met and I found out that he was going to be doing this retreat in December. So I had, you know, seven of my friends join me. We all went and did this retreat. And then I said to him, would you be open to hosting? I had him meet everybody on the platform. I said, would you be open if I hosted you? Would you be open to doing a retreat? And he goes, yeah, if it could be something smaller, like, you know, 15 people. And that's exactly what we had. So we said to him, you know, we asked him about this book and about this journey. And he said, you'll know when you're ready for this journey. So Joel, in answer to your question, you'll know when you're ready. And it's really something that you should ask Jay. Does he recommend that you come and join us, you know, on this journey? Does he recommend that you pick up the, the you know, the way of mastery? What JM did say to us is the way of mastery is actually a three-year journey. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I said, it's, it's just 35 lessons. And he said, yeah, but you do one a month over a three-year period. Each book has 12 lessons, except for the last one, which has 11 lessons. But then in the last month, the 36th month, you read the way of the servant. So we started on December, 2020 with the Yeshua letters in which JM talks about his journey with Yeshua and how he came to him. And then you spend every single month. So it depends, Joel, on how you want to do it. If you want to do that three-year journey and come back to this in three years, you can do that. If you want to do them concurrently and just go ahead and read them all now, if you want to come and join, I don't know where you live, but there's a group of us that meet every single morning. Tomorrow we're starting um, lesson 16 or lesson four of the way of transformation. Lesson 16 being that it's four plus 12 because we finished the first year. But We've had a lot of people that have kind of come in midway and gone back to study it. Um, I think that the best answer that I could, could give you would be to just go within and ask Jay what he thinks you should do, which is what I call Yeshua. Um, Orlando, yeah. given that you've done you know, more of this, do you have any response that you'd want to give to Joel about whether he should wait? I feel like I would have to wait, but I mean, I would, I would still really appreciate your response, Orlando. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? There is really nothing to wait for. Um, there is no time to waste. And, and my advice is to get immersed in any of this material. Uh, the way of, of mastery is very different to the Course in Miracles. Yeah. Since English is not my first language, I find the Course in Miracles very challenging. You know? yeah. um, and, the love, uh, and the way of mastery is just love. It's just love. It, it, it embraces you. It hugs you. It, it feels. A course, you. a course of miracles is mental, and and Orlando speaks the language of love. Spanish to me is the language of love, and I'm hearing you speak in my heart. Is so happy. Mm. I know that I know you. I know that I know all of you. But but the way of mastery is 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 the way of the heart. It is the language of love. I love exactly what mm. you're saying. Hmm. I, I do appreciate that response. Uh, I feel like that's probably why it was a little difficult for me to go through the course in miracles because, um, yeah, I wasn't really wasn't really feeling that per se. You know, okay. you know what Yeshua did to JM? He had him start at the back of the text and he had him read it backwards. Do you know that the lessons of a course in miracles are actually a story? So listen to this. Nothing I see in this room means anything. Everything that I see in this room has all the meaning that I have given it. I do not understand what anything in this room means. These thoughts do not mean anything. And I am never upset for the reason that I think. I am upset because I see something that is not there. I see only the past. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts and I see nothing as it is now. My thoughts do not mean anything. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. And I am upset because I see a meaningless world and a meaningless world engenders fear. God did not create a meaningless world. My thoughts are images that I have made and I have no neutral thoughts and I see no neutral things. And I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts, but I am determined to see, and I am determined to see things differently. Can you see how this is a story? These lessons, isn't that incredible? 
I, that is there's, a woman, there's a woman in our community, her name is Kim, and she stood up and she recited this entire thing. And I'm like, that's a storybook. That's an incredible story. What I see is a form of vengeance. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. I do not perceive my own best interests because I don't know what anything is for. And my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. Above all else, I want to see. Above all else, I want to see things differently because God is in everything I see. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. And I am not a victim of the world I see. I have invented the world I see. And there is another way of looking at the world. I could see peace instead of this. I mean, like it just goes on and on and on. And I'm like, Jesus, you knew exactly what you were doing. So Jesus had J.M. read the text of the Course of Miracles backwards from the back to the beginning. Anyway, just fascinating. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. All right, my darlings, I have a client at three o'clock, so I have to run. I thank you all so much for being here. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. I love you madly. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Priyanka is my assistant. She is with me for everything. And she'll be joining us as well. Yumi, I love you. Thank you for joining us. So we have Spain in the house and we have Hawaii in the house. We have New York in the house. We have Canada in the house. Joel, where are you located? Uh, Texas. We have Texas in the house. Vicky, where are you located? Arizona. Arizona. Orlando, where, where do you live? I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh my God. So we have Johannesburg, South Africa in the house, but you're originally from Spain? From Colombia. Oh, from, there you go. We are international, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and universal. All right, my darlings. Yeah. I love you all. And I'm so excited about having this journey with you all. Yeah. I'll see Thank you, very you. Much love to all. Much Blessings. love, everybody. Bye. Bye.